Good morning, everyone. Welcome to 100 Days of Bible Study. Really, the goal of this Bible study is first and foremost to just create a culture of Bible study, of daily Bible study. Okay. And secondly, just to explore different teachings and doctrines in scripture, you know, so it's really going to be a Bible study. But my ultimate goal in this is that you create a new routine for yourself. So when you wake up every morning at 6 a.m., especially if you caught this video live, you can just join us and enjoy the refreshing that comes with scriptures. At this time of the day, of course, you're using your gadgets to follow this devotion. So I would ask that you just get your Bible and your notebook. If you have a hard copy Bible, it makes it even better. Okay. And we're just going to enjoy ourselves this morning and be reminded that the word of God is beautiful. So this morning I woke up with a thought. Okay. You know, yesterday was Easter Sunday. Happy Easter, by the way, to everyone watching this, you know, so yesterday was Easter Sunday and we had an amazing time in church at Gold Rock Church. However, this morning I woke up just with a, a beautiful thought in my mind and it was the word forgiveness. So today I want us to just meditate on what forgiveness is. If we have received forgiveness, how to know if we have been forgiven and also how to forgive others. Okay. So firstly, let's just turn our Bibles to a verse that over the weekend really marked me. Luke chapter 23. We're going to read verse 34, Luke 23, verse 34. And this is really such a powerful verse. You know, it is a verse that shifted my theology in several ways. And the Bible says, then Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do and he parted his raiment and cast lots. So the first part of that verse is really what is intriguing to me, where Jesus is hanging on the cross and he is faced with death. He's literally dying on the cross for sins which he did not commit. And there Jesus hanging on that, on those nails, says, Father, forgive them. You know, every time I, I read that verse of scripture and I ask myself so many questions, I mean, how many times are we able to forgive people for things which they actually did to us? What more about forgiving people for punishing us for crimes we did not commit? You know, I remember when I was younger and we're growing up, you know, a few times, you know, when you're growing up in a house with so many kids, a few times one person does something or if you're known to always commit a certain kind of crime whenever that kind of crime is committed you're called up for it right so i remember you know i was a very mischievous you know young man and if i held a pair of scissors really just be sure that i will cut something okay so this this one time you know um, i think my mom had purchased a new um, purse or something like that and you know for some reason, someone else in the house, you know, used the blade to cut it. So she hadn't even finished paying for it and someone else had just destroyed it. And I was called up, you know, uh, when you grow up in the kind of home where <laughs> there's discipline. Okay. And sometimes, you know, they'll say, spare the rod and spoil the child. I grew up in one of those kind of homes. And I remember that I was called up and asked to confess and you know sometimes children out of fear will say no i didn't do it because they are, they are afraid of the discipline or the kind of discipline which the parent wants to use and i remember this time um my mom being really furious you know <laughs> and i was beaten you know i was beaten up on the accusation that you know i was lying and i had done it now very well they later on found out that it wasn't me and there was there were apologies but I remember just feeling this deep pain in my heart. You know, how can I be punished for something that I did not do? And I have several of such instances. I have known people and had friends who have been punished in one way or the other 
for a crime they did not commit. But here is Jesus. He is paying for a crime he did not commit. Jesus is suffering for the sins of mankind and he is perfect. The Bible says that he lived all through on earth and he committed no sin. He was not found with the fault. And yet, after all the lashing he had received, after all the rejection, hanging on that cross, Jesus said, forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they're doing. Every time I think about that scripture, my heart melts just in the realization that I don't understand the forgiveness of God, you know? Now, the way Jesus forgave on the cross is a suggestion of how God forgives us. And I feel like many people watching this, you know, if you've committed a crime or you have made a mistake or you're struggling with a sin or some kind of addiction or stronghold or something in your life, sometimes you get to feel like God cannot forgive you or God is too angry with you to listen to you or God is too angry with you to forgive you. And I feel like Jesus on the cross should show you something really deep about your theology and forgiveness that right there on the cross he's able to forgive in fact if you read down the chapter the same chapter so luke 23 if you just go down to verse 39 now he's having a dialogue with the two thieves one hanging by his left and the other one by his right and the bible says in verse 39 and one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him saying if thou be christ save thyself and us so you know the guy one of the thieves said if you are really the christ save yourself and save us you know i feel like he said it from you know a judgmental place you know <laughs> if you're really the christ what are you doing here if you're really who you claim you are then bring us down now the difference between jesus and the thieves is that the thieves had actually committed the crimes for which they were hanging on that cross you know however jesus hadn't committed the crime jesus was you know free jesus was righteous so he was paying for the sin of other people and they tell him you know if you're really the christ so the guy says if you're really the christ save yourself and save us then verse 40 but the other answering rebuked him saying dust not thou fear God. So the guy on the other hand just acknowledged him as God immediately. Seeing thou art in the same condemnation. Say, even though he was hanging on the cross, the thief on the, on the left side, I believe, said, hey, don't you fear God? He had the revelation of God on the cross. Did you see that? Did you ever notice? He said, don't you fear God? Hey, don't say that. Okay, um, even if he's accused and we are all accused, we all make mistakes, he's God for some reason. And when I read that just with a childlike heart, it feels like he was saying, even if God had made this mistake and he's hanging here with us, he's still God. You know, and sometimes we get offended to the point of offense, even against God. And this thief on the other side just teaches us something really powerful about our Christianity. Then in verse 41, he said, and we indeed justly. So we are really supposed to be paying for our sin, right? It says, for we receive the due reward for our deeds, but this man had done nothing. It says, we deserve our punishment. He doesn't. He's done nothing. He's wrongly accused and he is God. And in verse 42, that he goes ahead, ahead to say, and he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. In verse 43, And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Now, wow. You know, the guy tells the, the thief on the other hand, Don't you fear God? We deserve our punishment. Then he turns to Jesus and says, Please remember me. Does that sound familiar? Remember me? Do you remember the story of Joseph when... Joseph had interpreted the dreams of the cupbearer or the baker and the cupbearer, all right? And he had told the cupbearer that in three days you will be hanged. And then he said to the cupbearer that you will be restored to your position. You remember that? 
Then, when the cupbearer was being restored, Joseph, who was in prison, said, Remember me. So, he's asking for remembrance. It's a kind of repentance. He's saying, Hey, I will depend on you. I will need you. Now, when you really study scriptures, types and shadows in scriptures, you get to see that the, you know, the baker represented the body that was broken for our sins. But the cup bearer represents the blood that was shed for our justification, for our forgiveness, for our righteousness. So by the blood that was shed, we can ask the Lord to forgive us. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews 9 verse 22, very quickly. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. The Bible says, And almost all things are by the law, purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Other versions say, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. There's no remission. Now, remission is total removal. So he's saying, the Bible says, if blood is not shed, there can't be forgiveness. In other words, we can liken it in the story of Joseph too. If the blood is not shed, if the cup bearer is not restored, Joseph can't be rescued from prison. Do you get that? If the cup bearer is not restored, Joseph stays in prison. So if the blood is not shed, we remain in prison. But the blood of Christ has been shed already. And because of that, we can say, Lord, forgive me. We can ask the Lord for forgiveness. And if you doubt that God can forgive you, just think about Jesus on the cross. Think about Jesus saying to this thief, rightly deserving of his punishment. In fact, seconds to his own death. And Jesus says to him, this day you will be with me in paradise. The thief had done nothing right. He hadn't fasted, prayed. He hadn't done anything which many of us think are the reasons why God forgives us. All he did was just ask the Lord for forgiveness. And I feel like many times we struggle with knowing whether God has forgiven us because we feel that there is something we must do for God to forgive us. Well, the answer is yes and no. Well, yes, because the only thing you really have to do is ask the Lord to forgive you. No, because there's nothing more than that to do. Okay, so if you're struggling with something, if you're struggling with sin, if you're struggling with condemnation, this morning, I want you to know that God has forgiven you. As we study these scriptures and just see how Jesus related with people, my prayer is that the word of God will remind you that you are the forgiven of the Lord. You have been forgiven by the Lord. You see, forgiveness is the perfect brew of mercy and grace. So mercy will deliver you out of sin, deliver you out of darkness. But grace delivers you into, so grace delivers you into your inheritance, del delivers you into that which you don't deserve. Let me take an example. Now, the Bible says that um, David, at the time where kings were at war, David stayed and was gallivanting at his rooftop, you know, and then he sleeps with someone else's wife, Uriah's wife. Then he plots, you know, so that Uriah be brought back from the battlefield and, you know, try to sleep with his wife to cover his sin. It doesn't work out for him, right? So the woman is pregnant and David has sinned. And to that effect, Uriah dies in battle. So David basically plots the murder of Uriah because he was unable to cover his sin. And then this man dies. Did you ever notice that eventually the one who took over David as king, the one from whose lineage, you know, Christ came, Solomon, came from a wife, came from a woman, with whom David had committed sin. Look at that. Like God was able to take somebody's sin, somebody's mistake, and turn that into something beautiful. Same thing happens in the story of Jacob. The Bible says Jacob goes to Laban's house, his uncle, 
and works for seven years. Then he tells Laban, I'm going to work another seven years if you give me your second daughter, Rachel. And after seven years of work, he's deceived and he's given Leah and he doesn't love her. Leah is the girl in that marriage that's not loved. But did you notice that the tribe of Judah came from, you know, Leah? The tribe of Levi came from Leah. All the very powerful tribes really came from Leah, the one who was not loved, the one who was given to him as a mistake, the one that he received and thought was a kind of punishment. You see, God's mercy will, you know, pull you out of a scene, but his grace will use that mistake for your own good. There are some things that you've done in your life. There are some things which you're struggling with. There are some things which you did in the past and you're wondering, how could I ever repair this? How could I have lived such a life in the last three years, four years, six months? And I feel like this morning, God is trying to tell you that not only have I had mercy on you and forgiven you, I want to use that. I want to use that story to expand my kingdom. I want to use that story to expand my kingdom. Um, can I just read, um, you know, one or two more verses? Go to 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. The Bible says, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Okay, are you learning something? So this is really just a moment for you to, you know, be refreshed by the scriptures. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. The Bible says, let's start from verse 8, right? He says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. It says, if you, if you claim to have no sin, then you're deceiving yourself, especially if you're not a child of God, if you're not born again. Then he says in verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, he's able to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Look, no matter what you've done in your life, this morning, God only has one thing for you to do. Just confess your sin. Just say, Lord, I repent of my sin and I ask that you forgive me. And not only does God want to give you forgiveness of your sin, God wants to teach you how to forgive people who have wronged you. And this morning, two things are happening. Um, for many of you who are watching, God wants you to um, receive his forgiveness okay he wants to cleanse you of your faults and your mistakes and the thoughts and things that you're struggling with but also God wants to help you forgive so many of you who are watching God wants to teach you to forgive just forgive people and to let go of what has been done to you that hurts you and so I just pray for you this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus I pray that you will come to know the forgiveness of our Lord Jesus Christ even as when the woman was brought to him who had been caught in adultery and Jesus lifting up his head said to her, I do not condemn you, go and sin no more. I pray that this moment you will know that the Lord Jesus says to you, I do not condemn you, go and sin no more. I pray that you will have the confidence to confess your sin before the Lord, to repent and to change your ways. I pray that you will lift up yourself from this place by the grace of God. You will wake up from here and you will just go before the Lord in repentance and just say, Father, forgive my sin. Forgive me of all forms of unrighteousness. Forgive me for the thoughts that I've kept in my heart. Forgive me, dear Lord. And I receive your mercy. I receive your grace. And I declare, I am not condemned. There is no condemnation for me because I'm in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And therefore I declare over your life that there is no condemnation. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. So all through today, I want you to just stay with that meditation on forgiveness. And, I, and here's the exercise I'm going to give you, okay? I want you to, if you're struggling with sin or with any kind of, you know, problem with doubt, with fear, I want you to write down what is that thing in your life that you're struggling with? What is that thing that you feel God hasn't forgiven you for? And just say, Lord, I bring this thing before you, trusting that you have forgiven me. And also at this moment, if there's anyone in your life 
that you feel you're holding a grudge against, I feel like the Lord is giving you the empowering to be able to forgive them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Go ahead and have a blessed day. I declare that this day you receive good news from people. I declare that today will be such a beautiful day and such a beautiful week for you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you.